I've just been cleaning up the faces of all the legs, frames, rails and everything. And um, this is a wonderful point in this because now we're getting to the point where we're going to glue up the frames. So I take out the pencil lines first to make it easier. So all my reference faces are gone now. And it just gives it that extra clean up ready for gluing up. My next step is going to be just putting the bevel on the bottom of the legs down here. If you put the bevel on, it just stops the, uh, when you drag a bench across the floor, the extra weight, it'll fracture these edges if you don't do this. So whether you do a bevel or a round is up to you. I would do a straight bevel, just like this. Make it about eight mil wide. And that will stop it. It means this corner is nowhere near the outer edge, really. That's all it does. Nice and neat. It crispens everything up. And I don't know if it needs sanding or not, but probably not. There you go. So that's that one. Now, the one piece that I'm going to work on next is going to be this cross rail. And I've left these pencil lines in because by the time you've done the round over, you could have marred that surface. You may as well do it after you've done the round over. Just to make sure you've got the round over where it needs to be, I would just make a faint line on here. So butt this up against the shoulder, faint line just to guarantee the distance so that you don't round it over too far under the face of the tenon which will look like a gap when you've done. That's that one done. Now, the other thing is, this is my top rail. If you remember these protrude, I've already had my dry run on this and made sure all the joints sit. I'm marking this here because I'm going to cross cut this next just to make it make sure it's the, the same length as here. But I'm actually going to cut on the waist, uh, on the good side of the line. So I'm going to cut this side so that the tenon actually doesn't protrude past. And even when it shrinks, it will compensate for any shrinkage that might push the apron away, possibly. I'm going to cross cut this. That one's done. This one is where we do the round over, and this is not complicated. Get this set. This may spin in this um, clamp, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So 45 degrees across here, like that. Then drop your hand and work up onto the top. Keep the plane skewed. You notice I'm skewing in both directions. 45 this way and 45 along the long axis here will prevent anything breaking out on this edge. Drop your hand. And I've stopped about an eighth of an inch, three mil from the line. And then I back my iron off to where I'm taking a 
much shallower cut and refine it. <coughs> like that. Sandpaper. Just round it over, and I suggest you do this before you do the round over on this end. Again, it stops any breakout. I think 150 grit is sufficient for that. Drop this in here. And with this one, I'm just going to use a chisel, but you could use a rasp if you've got one. Start roughly on, keep your chisel low like this and pop it, lift it, pop it, and move towards the end with each chop like this. Turn over. And I actually have a rasp, so I'll show you that method too, just to Make sure you see both here. So here, if you've got a rasp, start here and then start lifting and following the arc. Either method, I usually will go with a flat file, 10 inch flat file works fine. Smooth cut. And that gives me that beautiful crisp corner along here that looks very nice when it's done. And that's the only part that's going to be protruding through the mortise hole on the outside face. I love the way that looks. Same on the other end. And then we are ready to put this together, just about. Lovely, this piece of pine at this end, it's got all these, this resin in it, it's just making this smooth, so smoothly over the wood. Micro adjust that setting so it's not too deep. Now we're ready to sound. Very quick, very effective. A little bit of clean up to get the pencil lines out next. And then we're ready for glue up. Beautiful. So a little bit of planing, not very much, just to take off the pencil marks. Take out any grubbiness like this, bevel the edges. Nothing on this edge to take out, looks very nice. Just gonna bevel the edges. Switch between planes if you've got a scrub plane. The bevels come very nice off a scrub plane.
I'm going to do the flat face. The executive puzzle here. I made sure I put my numbers on the tenons as well. I knew I would be planing them out so that I know which one goes where. And that one's great. So if you're gonna sand it, just a very light sanding. Because all it needs And I'm ready to glue up. So that's my next task. Let's take these out. Glue up, are you ready? Make sure you have everything ready. You've got your clamps. I'm taking the clamps. This one I already glued up. Uh, was set overnight. So that one's dry, ready for putting the bearer on. I just need the clamps off this one. So I've got, actually got five clamps on this one. You'll have to see how your shoulders um, come together because when you're clamping this wide, sometimes you clamp from one side, there's enough leverage to move the shoulder off the other side. So you may need to put a clamp to each side. It's going to depend on how it looks. I use the cheeks that I cut off my uh, tenons as packers just to make sure the clamps didn't mar the surface. So we're good. I, I'm not sure whether you should bevel these now because I've had this together and it does go, so I don't need the leading edge on the top one and the bottom one has the round over, so that just pushes itself in just fine. So I wanna make sure we've got everything where it needs to be. So that's there, I believe. This is my partial rehearsal here. As I said, it's already been together, so. so those are going in there. Just checking everything as I go, just to make sure, because once you start gluing up, you're at the point of no return. And the other thing is, I noticed when I glued the first frame up, you have to really go for it. Once you've put the glue on, you can't hang around. You have to really go for it if you've got friends to help you or some advisor or whatever just get as much help as you can if you think you need it okay one widespread is all it needs you don't have to do any more than that so just a zigzag and a spreader don't, I've avoided it going onto the tenon itself, on the end of the tenon, and I'm not putting any glue in the hole because it will just push out onto the tenon. So here I go, very quickly, and get this seated as much as you can. Already that's tightened on. But don't worry because the clamps will get it. I know the clamps will with the... If it does break, just replace it. All right. Bit of a trick, but I'm gonna just leave that as it is. And I'm gonna rely on the clamp. This happens and you have to live with it. Get this on, 
That's because my joints were nice and tight. So with a clamp next and the hammer, that joint will seat. And we'll be on our way. Uh -oh. Number two. When this goes in, that glue is going to spread all over the surface. It's going to be great. So you can't hang around, as you can see. Great. Another clamp. So you can see I still have a gap down here. So I have to get rid of that. At the top here, I don't need any packers because it's not going to be seen even if it did mar the surface. <coughs> Bit of dust there. So you come in. Combine, I've got a gap here, combining the clamp with the hammer just cinches that gap. This one at the bottom has to go. A little psychology here. This is where I want the clamp really, but if I go way down to the bottom here and use the leverage down here, this extra leverage should help tighten up that joint. like this. And a little bit of extra scientific help will help it too. So it's down now. I'm not going to put any more pressure. I've got a gap this side. That disappears pretty much altogether. So I go with my clamps and my shims this time. on this side of the tenon and this side and now this packing will actually do both sides so I'm going to put a clamp on the other side in a minute. I've got a little bit of a gap here so I keep my eye on it, apply the pressure and a little bit of science there, extra power to you. This one can come off. I'm going to put this one because it's so wide this time, I'm just going to put this on. There's a little gap at this end. So I'm going to put the clamp here. That, that cinched it nicely. So I'm going to take this off now and put this on the opposite side underneath here to work on the shoulder on the other side. Like this. 
just to make sure the other side is cinched up. Now I'm going to go over to this side. I've got a, quite a big gap there and a gap here. I know that's because of the compression in the fiber of the wood, the compression in the leg itself will do that uh, because the fibers on one side are compressed so it's forcing this side off but this will take care of it and again there you go One more, I think. These, these joints are all super tight. A couple of shims. They're well worth using the shims because it does help prevent clamp pressure from damaging the wood. Ah. Beautiful. Just what I wanted to see happened. The joint's perfectly tight, perfectly tight, perfectly tight. I'm going to just leave that glue there. It'll dry and I'll chisel it out later. I'm going to trade out this one. This is my next one. What I'm going to do is clamp this in the end here. Just to hold it while I screw the bearer. I'm going to put a bearer on the top. This is the part that undergirds the bench top, the laminated bench top, the well, to keep everything straight and level and a good anchor point. So I've got a piece of pine that I've uh, made for this. I've planed it up, it's flat, true, and I've left it just shy of the overall width on purpose because if there is shrinkage on the legs and this is flush, then this will keep that position, but they, I want the, the uh, aprons to move in and out with the legs. So just leave it a little bit short, a sixteenth of an inch on each side. That's the position. Find the center of the bearer. I'm just eyeballing this like this and I'm going to turn it around see how accurate I was there's my center line I'm going to put a screw about two inches from the intersection here one in the middle two inches in and then I'm going to put two screws into the leg on each side of the tenon so I'm going here and here not scientific at all just good positioning solid positioning I'm going to drill the holes So I've got three inch screws into the long grain, into the end grain because it needs that extra bite. And I am slightly dovetailing the angle. So to show you what I mean, I'm coming in here, go square like this and then anchor over. And when you're going into end grain, that helps it. It's like a dovetailed angle that helps it stay in. This just a hair high, just a hair. I'm just gonna take care of it. It's not very much. You don't want it to be different. I'm gonna run a bead of glue. And I remember dropping my glue. There it is. Okay, just a wiggle of glue along here. This just helps it to bed. It doesn't add a whole lot to it, but it just helps this to bed onto the surface. Do I need to countersink this? No, I don't need to. Not in pine. If it was a hardwood, I might need to. But the screws will seat just fine.
Now having said that, that screws right on a knot, so I may regret saying it. Here, um, the screw pulled it off centre. All I want is flush. Same on this one. Great. No problem. And then just the middle ones. You can see this also anchors everything, pulls everything together. And that is my leg frame done. I do the same to the other one. That's dry and perfect. Great. I'm ready for the next stage. I'm going to plane up the aprons. I've reconfigured my bench again to make that happen. So this really just entails planing up the surface any roughness in it, any uneven. I've got some unevenness here because of thickness. So I've got to take that down, get that close to, and then I've got to straighten, make sure everything's straight, square, and then cross cut to length. Simple enough. Scrub plane, I'm gonna get this down with a scrub plane here first. mention at this point that if you have already done your aprons and you've left it for a week or so it could be that they will distort because of reabsorption of moisture release of moisture so it's better to do your aprons as close as possible to the actual assembly because I can see a little bit more of a change in this than I expected.
a little hollow here. Great, it's good enough. Edges, we have to check this edge. Nice and straight, nice and straight. If it's not, go ahead, clamp this on here. I'm gonna take a shaving off anyway. That's a good workout, that was. This old man gets his workout. Yeah, just about bottomed out. There we go. Good and tight. And then a few shavings off here. So I'm just uh, cleaning it up more than anything, but you don't need to do any more than this. Whether this is the bottom or the top, if it's the top edge, when we fix this to the apron, to the bench top, we'll be leaving it protruding past the top to plane it flush anyway. Just one stroke for the iris. And then we check it for parallel because we really don't want any discrepancy there. So I'm just going to measure it. If it is out of parallel, you have to plane it parallel. I am actually dead on again. So we're good. So this is ready for cutting to length. So I'm going to cut one end dead square with the square and the knife to lay everything out. Cross cut saw. I have plenty of length, so I'm gonna cut a good chunk off. I'm taking about an inch off here, inch and a half. Depending on which piece of wood Now my knife line marries up both directions, which means I am parallel. The surface I just planed was the inside face, so I used a scrub plane for that. And actually a scrub plane doesn't put a necessarily bad finish on. It can work just fine. In my case, it would work fine. This will be my outside face. No, this is my inside face. So I'm using the knife wall all the way around as I usually do because it prevents that, uh, that tearing on the, on the face, on the edge fibers that are unsupported. Started down there and I'm going to go across so I'm square. If it's working as it is for me right now, just go perpendicular like this. If it's not, light down, get on track. Scrub plane will not usually do end grain too well. 
So I'm going with my smoother now. Work to your knife walls. Don't go all the way through, just work halfway or part way. Turn over. There it is. That's it. I'm not going to do any more to that. The next thing is to offer this to this, flush it, dead on. And you can always touch it up later if you're slightly off, you'll still be able to plane it flush with the top if you need to. There's my cut line. And I am sweating. I do like these to be square. So it's worth spending time on your apron to make sure that you are. See, the way I tell that is this, where I nudge this here, the knife wall is perfect there as well. So let's hope my next apron is the same, which it will be. If this is my inside face, then I would cut from the outside face to the inside just in case my knife wall missed. But I'm sure yours won't. So I'm going to start on this face, go along the long face just a little bit, maybe three inches like this, stand it up to get my square across. Now, and follow that line. And what I meant, it, it is going, it's going fine, but what I meant before is if you find yourself going off track, you can come on from this side and you can correct that stroke, correct the progress Perfect. Beautiful cut. Clean up and make sure your plane is sharp if you're working in pine. Hardwoods were a bit more forgiving, but pine, you don't get the crispness you want if your plane isn't sharp. That's it. See, let me show you what we got. So we got a crisp, clean, perfect end. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna flip this over. I wanna clean up the outside face just to take off any marks, any surface discrepancy. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same to my other apron. Then I'll be ready for the layout. Mm -hmm.